Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Alho here with KissAnalog.com. Today, it's going to be pretty cool. We're going to take this QMI preamp. It's a reference preamp. It's supposed to be really high-end, high-quality. The company went out of business. From what I understand, they made amplifiers as well as preamps. The amplifiers, I heard that they sounded great, but they had a propensity to blow up <laughs> or to die or oscillate or something. And I know that there's other companies that were bigger companies that had the same kind of problem. They survived because they're big enough to survive a crisis. But when you're a small company trying to develop new products, it sounds like they didn't survive that. But from what I heard, from what I've read, is that those amplifiers sounded really good. And some people still like them. There's not a lot of talk about the preamps. Uh, this was a JFET preamp. supposed to be... You know, this was what they considered a reference preamp. I got this on a trade many, many years ago. And I kind of did a video on this. I'll put the link down below where I kind of showed it. And then I uh, restored the capacitors in it because I powered it up. And I was very careful bringing up the very... Anyway, I kind of did another video on that. I'll show you the link down below for that. If you need to restore capacitors and equipment that you haven't powered up for a long time, you want to restore those capacitors. You don't want to just hit the switch and turn it on because those capacitors haven't had any energy in them for a while and they get shocked. So you want to kind of, they're kind of like a battery. You want to slowly cycle it a few times to kind of bring life back to it, okay? Or to make sure that they're going to be okay. So I did that. Got a couple videos on that. Today, what I want to do, I want to show you the curves, the Bode plot. And I want to show you the Bode plot of, say, coming in the auxiliary come, and what it looks like, the signal coming in, signal coming out. I want to show you if it's flat or not. And what we want to see is flat from what? The hearing range, 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. We want to see it flat through that range at least. So we'll do that. The other thing I want to do is I want to go into the phono, the turntable, where you put your, you know, your turntable signal into it. It comes in the phono stage. Phono stages have an equalization. Your cartridge on your phono player, as it picks up those vibrations on your record, as your record rotates around and it sits there and vibrates, uh, the higher frequencies are easier to transmit that energy because the time is very small that that signal pops up. So not very much energy. Lower frequencies, <laughs> they, uh, they last longer. And so the, there's more energy in them. And so the phone, the, that little cartridge, that little needle doesn't pick up those signals as well. It doesn't transfer them as well, okay? Well, so, okay, so anyway, um, when you go on the phono stage, it's called a, the, there's the equalization stage to take care of that thing. And it's called a RIAA. And I think that's Recording Industries Association of America, I believe it's what it's called. Uh, anyway, it's... It's, people just refer to it as the RIAA curve. And so it's a, it's like an equalization curve. So if you have an equalizer, you could set up your equalization, you know, your equalizer to equalize that sound. So basically it comes in flat. I mean, if you had an original recording of that music, it'd come in the way it's supposed to. It'd come in flat, you know. So um, so that curve it's kind of interesting. It's it's amplified at the low end, like you'd think after I just what I just said, and then it drops as the frequency gets higher. But it's not just a linear drop. It kind of goes like this, and because your hearing's not really linear through frequencies, there's certain frequencies it hears better, and the phono cartridge picks up. You know, so it's all about trying to equalize that. So basically, if you were to record a signal uh, as you know a certain amplitude from 20 hertz to 20k and then you played it back through your phono cartridge it would come in like this it'd be low and it'd come up and eventually get up to where it's supposed to be so people go okay let's equalize that let's boost this up let's not boost this let's let it ride through that but then let's boost it again and let's boost it again you know something like that so so what people would say is like, okay, let's boost a lot down here, and then we'll come up here, and then we'll drop one of the boosts. We won't boost as much, and then we'll 
boost it a little bit more and then drop it again and anyway it's something like that so that way when you play it back through your phono stage it's flat just like it was recorded okay so that's your your RIAA curve now I'm going to show it to you here okay and here's one of the things I want to show you a lot of times you just see the curve and it kind of looks like this but the curve I'm going to show you shows where it dips and where it flattens and where it dips and where it flattens okay and whenever it dips that's a, what we call pole uh, like in a speaker crossover when you or even in the amplifier at 20 kilohertz somewhere after 20 kilohertz we have a pole where we where we take the signal and we don't amplify it anymore we drop the amplification off and where it rolls off that's a pole okay so and in this case, we start off with this real high gain at low frequencies, and then it drops down, and then it has what we call a zero. It flattens out. So whenever you have increased gain, it's called a zero. Whenever you have decreased the gain, it's called a pole. So, um, and the pole is spelled P-O-L-E, like a pole, like you're going around a pole, okay? The way I think about it, it's... It's like P-U-L-L. You're being pulled down, okay? <laughs> but when you when you have a gain increase, it's called a zero. It's it, so mathematically. Let me explain that real quick. Um, there's a transfer equation from input to output, right? So that transfer equation it would show this thing like that. Let's say you had transfer equation just showed flat. It's flat through all frequencies. It'd be like uh, you know, V out over VN. That's the gain, right? If you have uh, a gain, if you have 10 volts out and you put one volt in, you got to gain 10. And if that was true, all the time, V out over VN. And it'd be, say, equals 10. So that your gain is 10, no matter what. But it's not that. At some frequency you want to roll off. So you go, okay, it's 10 times. So let's say it's something like this. 10 times, in parentheses, um 20k minus f so when the frequency gets to 20k that goes to zero okay so now your equation goes to zero the whole quick you know any zero anytime you have zero divided by whatever it's zero right your whole equation turns to zero so that's called pull you just pull down and it's 20 hertz but now let's say that equation that in those parentheses um the 20k minus the f Let's say in parentheses there's a square. So that's squared. Well, um, what that means is you have two poles. So as you come down to 20K and it goes to zero, now you go down 40 dBs per decade instead of 20 dBs. So you have a double pole, okay? Uh, second order equation, they call it, because it's a, the order is two squared, right? So second order equation, those are poles. All right, so in the RIAA, you're going to have this thing where it's going to drop down. So the equation is going to have something like that where it drops down 20 dB. But at some point, it's going to say, okay, take away that. Maybe it's 40 dB, and then it drops to, to zero. So it flattens off, then it drops down again. Well, where it flattens off, you have to add a zero. The way you do that is in your mathematical equation down below. So down underneath your equation, underneath the division line, well, you might have an equation with the parentheses that says uh, F minus 10K. So at 10K, that goes to zero. Well, when you divide some number, even if it's only one, one divided by a very small number is going to be, like that very small number will go into one a lot of times. So it's a big number, right? So if that number goes to zero, then it goes to infinity. So what happens is whenever you have on the bottom of your equation whenever any of these factors they call them factors that you can put in parentheses and you have this parentheses multiplied by this parentheses multiplied by that you know if you have a big equation well anytime one of those parentheses something inside that makes it go to zero then that whole thing goes to zero the whole equation blows up and that's called a zero so when you when you roll off that's a pole and then when you zero it goes flat your pole zero pole zero okay so anyway just kind of want to explain transfer functions and the pole zero thing just give you a little bit of inside information i hope that wasn't you know too messy
but I just wanted to kind of explain that because let's go look at the curve, okay? And you'll kind of see what I'm talking about. You'll see the poles and the zeros. Now you know what to call them. Poles go down, you pull it down, zeros take away one of the poles and flattens it off. Now, if you're going down 60 dBs and you have one zero, you go 40 dBs. It doesn't flatten it. it, it just flattens it, it just brings off the curve a little bit, right? Then you have another zero, goes to 20, another zero goes to zero, and then it's just flat. So, and you know, so that's kind of how it works. So, let's go look at the curve, okay? All right, guys, so here is the RIAA curve, uh, th theoretical and actual, okay? So, theoretical just means mathematical, and actual means what it kind of looks like. So, Whenever you do the actual, you can start like say here's a pole that we talked about, and you go three dBs down, and you make a dot, and then when you make a curve, you start here, you hit that dot, and then you hit the curve, and then see here's this zero, you go up three dBs, make a dot, and you can just line up your curve that way. Here's one, come down three dBs. So if you do it that way from the mathematical, you could draw this green waveform and that's actual, okay? So let's go back 50 Hertz. So you come out with this gain of 20 dBs. Now we're gonna see that plus we're gonna see another gain on top of that from the second stage preamp. And then it goes down and then we have the zero where it levels off and that's at 500 hertz. So right through here, it, they're trying to hold the gain from 500 hertz to about 2100 hertz flat, okay? So that you have a lot of gain, you come down, and then right through this is a good hearing range, and then you start dive down again. So then um, you duck down again. So that's the RIAA curve. Okay, so you're gonna have a pole here. First of all, you're gonna have a gain, 20 dB gain, then a pole at uh, 50 hertz, a zero at 500 hertz, and another pole at 2100 hertz. So that would be how you design your gain stage, okay? All right, guys, so did that make any sense? I, I ho kinda hope it made sense, but anyway, you saw the RIAA equalization curve, right? It's kinda weird. Let's scan it on this thing let's see if it looks like that okay and uh yeah and you can kind of pull out where the angles change now i'll tell you what one thing if you're looking at phase the phase changes before you see the gain change so whenever you see the phase if it's not flat if it's dropping or going up it means it's either yeah you, well anyway i don't want to get too much into that stuff but you you can tell from the phase where something happened and if the face goes up you can tell it's a zero if it goes down you can tell if it's a pole you can kind of tell by looking at the face too okay so uh, i think you saw that on well you know what let's go ahead and do the gain phase measurement on this for the funnel and then we'll come back and well you know what i'm going to do them both i'm going to do the funnel and then i'm going to do just uh, the auxiliary so you can see if it's flat or not and uh yeah let's try that i've been letting this warm up it's been powered for a little while probably a half an hour an hour and uh it's pulling eight watts it's been sitting eight watts for all this time so i feel like the capacitors are nice and warmed up i've cycled it on and off a bunch of times and slowly and i think this guy's in good shape so oh and by the way i'm gonna have the thg meter and i'll call out the keep the thg numbers too okay so hopefully the THC is going to be low. We'll find out. Really, all I care is it's below 0 0.1. 0 0.1 or below. But anyway, let's just see what it is. All right, let's do it. All right, guys. Hey, uh, this is a preamp, and this backside, I'm. You can't really see very well. Sorry, but over here's the phono input, and here's the output. The line output is called. So. And then I'll transfer it over here to the aux and come out the line. And I just kind of want to show you that I'm using times 10x probes back here. The grounds are all tied together, so I don't need differential probes. I can use my shielded probes a little better 
uh, noise immunity, I think. Now, let me show you the front of it. I've got individual gains. So these are mono blocks. So I'm gonna come in through my funnel stage and we're gonna look at that first. And then we're gonna come through the uh, aux stage. I wanna see what the funnel stage looks like. So let's go to the GW Instex scope where we're gonna do this right up here. Okay, here, let me show you the app. I come up here to app and well, it's already set up here. Let me quit it, okay? So it comes up with these applications. See, I've got these other ones which I need to show you guys too. But this one's called the FRA. If I move that over, see the FRA, Frequency Response Analysis, okay? So I come over here and I say select that. And then it says, oh, are you sure you want to select it? Heck yeah, I want to select it. So then it comes with this. The way this screen works is up here, it shows my input and output signal. So I can actually kind of watch them as it's changing it. And I can set up the frequency. Well, first of all, I can set up the signal. I say inputs channel two, outputs channel four, input, output. And I can select any channel I want. And then I go to AWG, my uh, generator, okay? And uh, arbitrary wave generator. And I can say start at 20 hertz, stop at 100 kilohertz. We're gonna go out to 100K. And amplitude in 10 millivolts. That's as small as I can go, which is a little bit on the high side for a turntable, but it's okay. It's not bad. And then, uh, so that's my setup, okay? And then that's all set up, load 50 ohm. That's all fine, everything's good there. Uh, reference circuit kind of shows your device under test, channel one going in, channel two coming out. Doesn't matter what channel, you can select whatever channel you want. You just want input and output channel because the gain is output divided by input, okay? And right here is generator one, signal coming from the back side. There's two generators, so I'm using generator one. So I've got this cable right here coming from the back side, okay? So then get rid of the circuit, and then I go to FRA run. And Actually, I think we go run it right now, but I want to bring the camera in, zoom in, so you can see it close. Up. All right, guys, we're all set up to run, and right now it looks like, well, the green waveform looks a little distorted. Um, not sure why. All right, guys, so uh, I turned down the volume a little bit to adjust for the green waveform not to be distorted, so let's go ahead and run it. Now, we can see the input and the output's a green waveform. The blue one's the input. Okay, so there's the curve, it's starting to draw. And our gain is the blue and the phase is the red. So we're starting off at really high gain, 65 dB, but a drop down to 43 dB. Okay, so yeah, I mean, it looks like it's following that RIAA curve. Okay, it's done. So. Let's just talk about this. Um, you can see the gain. Okay, you see the phase. See when I was talking about the phase. Whenever you see the phase shift, you know something happened to the gain. So the gain's rolling off, and right around here where the phase shifts, the gain's also shifting. It's flattening off. So zeros right around in here, flattening off, and then the gain changed or the phase shifted again. So you can tell down here. You can see the gain uh, starting to slope back down. So it's coming down, flattens off, it goes down again, and then starts to flatten off again right here. So we're at 20K here, so after that it doesn't really matter, I guess. But anyway, so that's the gain. It starts off at really high gain. Now here, let's go to, I think we go to this guy and say FRA measure, turn on the cursors, We'll go to cursor number one, and I can move that over here, okay? So cursor one, 63.5 dBs at 20 hertz. And it's minus 16 degrees uh, phase shift at that point. So let's go to cursor two. Okay, cursor two's right, I'm gonna put 20K. Well, first of all, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down here. So it's kind of flat here, right? And then it starts to roll off. And then right through here, it's dropping, and then it starts to flatten off again. Okay, we're at 46 dBs. 
and then it starts to roll off again right here and then at 20k let's go down 20k and right there we are at 25 dBs and about 76 degrees so yeah so that's the RIAA curve guys and uh, yeah I'm you know and what we're gonna do is we're gonna go look we're gonna go in the auxiliary input now and see if it looks flat at the uh, when you just go straight in the auxiliary all right now in the auxiliary curve I'm gonna go back to let's go back set up and I gotta change it the signal amplitude this 10 millivolts we're gonna go over here and change it to uh, actually let's go up I think we want to go to um, we will go to 2 volts peak to peak okay I think that'll work. Let's try that. Okay, so let's try that. Now, um, can I turn up the amp? Okay, so here we go. Let's go into the run. And let's see what that looks like. Okay, so so far it looks good. The output is the blue signal. It looks like a sinusoidal, so that's a good sign. Uh-oh. Something looks wrong. Okay. Whenever you see that happen, you know something's disconnected. Let me go check this circuit, make sure I didn't disconnect a probe. All right, that was kind of funny. Uh, here, let's run it again. I forgot to turn the preamp to auxiliary input. Okay, this should be better. Oh, the green one. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So now the blue and the green, the input and the output look cleaner, bigger signals. Oh, look how flat that's looking. So zero phase and 17 you know 17 dbs on the left i don't know if that's what it is we'll get the cursors up in a minute look how flat that is 10 20 okay 20k now we're out to 100k wow that looks awesome to me okay let's go back to this guy and analyze fra measure cursors on let's turn up oh, let's go to cursor one Okay, cursor one's right out here. Let's go to cursor two. Let's go back there. Okay, so 17.77 dB gain at this point. Now, I didn't have the gain knob turned up all the way. I probably should have, but anyway, um, it's coming out. Wow, look how that's 17.79, 17. Man, that's within about 0.1 dB. That looks super flat. Okay, 10K, 17.5 is about 0.2 dBs off. Okay, oops, right about there's 20, close to 20K, 19K. And, uh, wow, we're like 0.26 dBs different. So that is super flat. The phase is looking awesome as well. And, man, the game actually just keeps on going straight out to 100K. That's pretty, that's pretty amazing. And, the, and you see the phase just shifting down. Okay, yeah, I like that. That's looking good. Now, you know what? Is the phase going so flat, I'm really tempted. Here, let's go back and let's set it up. And let's set up the stop frequency. Um, let's go to one meg. I'm going to turn this all the way up to one megahertz. Okay, let's try that. FRA run. Okay. We'll close those menus. Please turn off data logging. Huh. I, was, I didn't know I was data logging. <laughs> anyway, here we go. We're scanning. So up here you can see they're in phase. The waveforms look nice and clean. That gives you an idea if you're overdriving or underdriving. If you watch that up there. Okay, there we go. Whoa, there we go. All right, so I went out one megahertz. I don't know why the graph took us out the 10, but uh, 20Ks over here, look how flat. It finally rolls off out here around 100K, and then the phase starts to change. Well, the phase is changing, right? And then you see the gain start to change out here around two, 300K. So, man, that's that's looking pretty good, I think. All right, guys, so what do you think? 
Uh, I think the gain stage on this preamp looks really good. It looks really flat on the aux and on the RIAA. It looks like it, I think it matches up pretty well. Um, the distortions look good. So right now I'm, I'm pretty thrilled with this guy. I think it's testing really well. And I'm ready to do some more testing, some distortion testing and stuff like that. But right now that, that, that looks pretty cool. What do you guys think? Uh, that RIAA curve, pretty interesting curve, right? Uh, if you play records, that. If you don't, it's still kind of cool. Just, you know, the geek side of us, right? <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, pretty cool preamp. It's, uh, yeah, you have to look at my previous video to see the back side and, and how there's three separate boxes behind this plate. This is a rack mount plate. It's meant to uh, mount into a 19-inch rack, which a lot of equipment back in the day was designed that way like these big guys back here these two things are designed that way you put what they call ears on these things so you can mount them into 19 inch racks uh, some equipment like these guys would have like a face plate where you mount these behind them and then they'd go into a 19 inch rack so even if they weren't big like these if they're like this you could still fit it anyway just want to point that out that's why it's shaped that way and that's why it's got the what we call the ears, you know, where you can mount that into a rack. Um, but yeah, right now, it's pretty cool. L love the metal knobs. The You can tell the machining, really nice work. So let me know what you guys think. Has it, anybody ever heard of this preamp? Has anybody ever heard this preamp? I'd really be interested in what anybody knows about QMI and uh, the gain cell series. This is the reference um, standard, supposedly. So we'll find out. So far, so good, huh? Thanks. For All right, guys. So I want to give two thumbs up to my patrons. Appreciate you guys. And also two thumbs up to you guys that have hit that thank you button that YouTube added. Uh, there's, you know, where you hit the like. That's a free way to support the channel. I really appreciate that. But there's also that thank you button where you can do a one-time donation, buy me a cup of coffee, that kind of thing. <laughs> much appreciated. Very much appreciated. But yeah, my patrons that I'm going to turn on my membership thing, hopefully this weekend. And once I do that, I'll let you know probably in the next video. And uh, hopefully it'll be done in, this weekend, like I say. And then what I'll do is I'll, I think I'm going to do these um, uh, videos, you know, these uh, live videos with my members, of the YouTube channel and the patrons. So I'll invite all you guys and we'll just chat or we'll have a topic or something. I not sure how we're going to do it yet, but yeah, I want to start doing that. So after I hit 20K, I felt like that was the time to do it. So God, that's pretty cool. Hey, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.